Hello and welcome to another episode of the Chrissy Mayer podcast. We are on iTunes, YouTube, Spotify, and SoundCloud. And if you're listening to us right now on iTunes, please go and leave a five-star review. For example, here's a review from just another 12 C8. <laughs> She's wonderful, funny, nice, and asks good questions and has good insight. Oh, thanks guys. Merry Christmas, by the way. This is a Christmas episode. You know, it's Christmassy is quitting smoking. <laughs> Lucy Nicotine Gum, that's our sponsor. They are a company founded by Caltech scientists and former science, Caltech scientists and former smokers looking for a better and cleaner nicotine alternative. Finally, tobacco alternatives that don't suck. Researched and developed for three years to be made for people, not patients. Lucy has created a nicotine gum with four milligrams of nicotine that comes in three flavors, wintergreen, cinnamon, Oh, it's good. And pomegranate. Lucy also has a lozenge with four milligrams of nicotine in a cherry ice flavor. Each and every flavor mm, actually tastes great. Now you can hear me chew. It's convenient, discreet. These products can be enjoyed anywhere, on flights, at work, on the go, or even in the gym. It's the end of 2020. It's about to be 2021. Do something good for yourself. If you're sick of your cigarettes, if you're over your vape, if you're done with your dip, get some Lucy nicotine gum. Mm, damn. It's spicy. This is the real deal. A subscription to Lucy comes directly to your door each month. It's so simple. You don't have to leave your house because Lucy has your delivery down. And for all my CMP listeners, go to lucy.co, use the promo code CMP to get 20% off all your products, including gum and lozenges. That's Lucy, L-U-C-Y dot co and use the promo code CMP at checkout. Also, I have to give this disclaimer. Warning, this product contains nicotine derived from tobacco and nicotine is an addictive chemical. You know what else is addictive? The holiday spirit. Go to lucy.co, use the promo code CMP. Mm. Oh my God, delicious. Mm. Guys, I also need to, woo, very cinnamony. I also need to talk to you guys about Adam and Eve. The holidays are here. They're, they're already upon us. If you want to get a last minute gift or really get yourself a new year's gift or your, your sister, your boyfriend, girlfriend, everybody could use a new vibrator, a new toy, go to adamandeve.com right now. They've got tons of great toys on their website, lubes, vibrators, butt plugs, the sky's the limit, lingerie. Uh, there's, there's so many wonderful things on their website. It's not just like a cheesy, you know, kitschy sex toy shop. This is the internet's number one adult store. So go on to adamandeve.com, use the promo code CMP. You're going to get almost any item online for up to 50% off plus free shipping. You can't beat that folks up to 50. That's these are killer savings. Get yourself a new year's vibe, a Christmas butt plug. Think of me when you do it, use the promo code CMP, get up to 50% off plus free shipping. I am so excited to have, these are two of my favorite guys on the podcast today. Um, they are both the hosts. They are the genius behind In Hot Water on Compound Media. And if you haven't already, please check out one of them on his Amazon special, 25 Sets. It's Aaron Berg and Gino Bisconti. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> hey guys. Mama, what do I say? That was originally my line when we did the first episode was, hey, hey. And then Gino started doing it afterwards. <laughs> because I was I was caught off guard whenever they would start the show. It was, uh, but I actually knew they were starting. I'll let you in on a little secret we knew the whole time. What was it? Uh, that the show was starting. My lighting sucks now because I blew out the light I usually use for lighting. Can you guys see me okay? Oh, no. no. You're a little dark. It's okay, though. You're a little dark. Oh, I, I know what I'll do to make me more well lit. I'll just take this thing down. Keep talking. Buy me some time. It'll take half a minute. <laughs> okay, take half a minute. All right. I don't know. I mean, we invited, I invited Mike Figs to do this podcast as well. <gasps> well, I don't know if he's running late. Um, he, he responded to the Zoom link with a new phone, who this. So I don't know if he's coming or not, but he is invited. Do you feel like uh, he's going to show up? What does your instinct say? <laughs> I don't, I think my instinct is saying no, which is unfortunate because this is a totally separate thing. Uh, 
than wet spot. And it's like, yeah, if you, if you've quit wet spot, you can still work with me. You can still, you know, do other things. So I don't know. I don't know if he's, I don't know what's going on. Did you leave on good terms? Not, not really. No, he kind of, is cunt he, a good term? He quit on Monday. He quit. Um, and it's like, I, I understand. I'm not surprised because he has a little bit been phoning it in. I mean, the last year it seems. And, uh, you know, it, I, I think he's somebody who just wants to do his own thing. So I think he would be maybe happier doing something else. And this is just like a blessing in disguise. Um, but yeah, I mean, like once somebody's like, I'm out, what are you going to do? So what would his own thing be? I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, you know, we've tried to help him pitch shows <laughs> to compound. And uh, so I don't know. I think he maybe he needs to figure that out. He seems like upset about the idea of, quote, having to work for me, even though like, you know, I'm the one who I mean, he does. He has no responsibilities other than showing up. And uh, so it's like, in a sense, he is kind of working for me because, you know, I put the whole show together. He just has a job to do. So I don't know. I, I love the guy. He's so funny. He's so talented. So I don't know, maybe not the best team player, but. Do you think that his concern about going mainstream is getting in the way of it? <laughs> oh, that's, that's <laughs> oh, a good question. It, does he want to go mainstream? I think so. I Okay. You know how I get like I like I lose my mind about once a week on someone that I really like, you know, like my friends, like we have fun. Like if you saw the show this week, we were having fun with like prank callers, you know, because we don't give a fuck about them. They're not real people. But I also lost my mind on Drew. Well, earlier they're, this real, week. they're real people. <laughs> you know what I mean? I lost my mind robots on calling you. because he's a <laughs> excuse me. It's not robots calling you. You have you associate with one robot. He comes, they come in the studio. The rest of it is, those are real people calling right. you. To but, write but, them off is not real people. But when I say real people, I don't mean robots, which are 1.28% smarter than humans, I believe it is. 1.68% smarter right. than humans. Where are you getting these stats from? <laughs> like, I, I mean, when I say real, I should use, I should use quotes and say, real people like, like when we talk about this on our show, Aaron, when, when someone shits on the beach or just matter of factly says, I threw acid on my wife because uh, I lost a bet and she wouldn't go back. Not she wouldn't fuck my four friends that I lost a bet and had to pay them back by letting them fuck my wife. She wouldn't go back and let them do it again. When he says, I, so I threw acid on her matter of factly, that's not a real person, okay? What? Can you explain that to Chrissy, please? Yeah. What he's saying is he's saying Indian people. <laughs> now, uh, well, you see, Chrissy, we do a show called In Hot Water, and two yes. or three times a year, we get to the stories that Aaron looks up so diligently every night. And this, there was another time, like, Chrissy, if you were to walk by the beach, right, and see a group of people shitting, shitting onto the beach, wouldn't you get an exact count? Wouldn't you be so taken aback? You, or would you just say, yeah, like four or five people? Or would you stop and say, you know, one, two, I think I saw five people sitting on the beach. I would notice. I think yeah. it's such a rare thing that I would, uh, I would Chrissy, really. Let's say you walk by and see it every day because you live in India where they're, what are they, Aaron? They're not people. And you <laughs> see a group and someone asks you like, oh, there was four or five today. Cause you don't. All right. Well, they're not people. All right. Well, getting back to our story, uh, people that, that call you with a restricted number because they think in, in 2020, when everything you need is in your phone and like if you're on the phone, I'm like in 1980, like you're like, oh my God, you're on your landline going I'm like, oh, why am I taking this prank call? I thought it was important, all this. They're not people, okay? But our dear friends at Compound, like Drew, who I see every day when we do the crossover and I used to fucking work with, uh, work with whenever on your show or when I used to fill in for Malice, dear friend of mine, I consider him a, a person. And when he says, should I be scared of the coronavirus? And I snap and scream and say, you should be embarrassed. Well, then this gets back to the very point of Figs. We fight with people we care about. You know what I mean? Yeah. And one time Figs, getting all the way back to what Aaron brought up, do you think he's trying to go mainstream? One time Figs said that to me. We're sitting at a little bar called Sullivan's when the world was normal. And I used to drink. I don't anymore except Saturday nights. That's a whole nother. We were there two weeks ago getting blasted. <laughs> Maybe that picture on the internet was my comeuppance for, for fucking... Uh, <laughs> uh, how much I fucked you up, but I didn't. You just never said no to shots, which is another reason I adore you. 
That's my thing. I don't say no. That's why the yeah. boys love me. <laughs> Get a lot of work in the industry that way, uh, I'm told. Uh, what was I going to say? But Figs one time said to me, he's like, should I take some of my stuff down so I can get on Saturday Night Live? And if you think I yelled at Drew, I lost my mind on him. I said, you should never come in and do our show again. You should never come in and do our show again. And I tried to explain to him, and it gets to what we're talking about here, because you're going to half-ass our show if you're in the back of your head saying, is this going to wind up uh, getting me canceled on, us, on you know, the internet? You can't do the show like that. Like I've said that to Aaron all the time. Our show is so genuinely organic because there's not a moment that something sprouts up in the three working synapses in my brain or the millions in his. And we're like, maybe I shouldn't say this. Maybe, maybe I, there's no little governor on that. Um, no little governor. <laughs> so I should quit. <laughs> Dude, we've had this conversation countless times. Once a year, you'll be like, I don't know about this. And then I'll say one thing and then you'll just double down on everything. I don't know if you've noticed that. It, it makes you very good at what you do. Combat yeah. Media is like, we're the opposite of SNL. We're funny and, uh, yeah. you know, we're not politically correct. And we, we say the things that like people are thinking and not saying. And I believe I like called you a coward once last month and I got knocked out of my chair five, ten, five times yeah. after that. But I'll also say this, SNL, to say it's not funny, that's an over presumption. There's some They've had funny, funny stuff. Yeah. Some funny stuff does pop up. Pete Davidson's a funny guy. With that right. Eminem, that uh, Santa thing that came out a few weeks ago, that was funny. Once in a while, they'll still do funny stuff. But, but I, I think, think the overall message of that show. Right, and I, I think that's what we're saying. Like, <laughs> uh, Bill, when Bill Burr hosted it, did we not all fucking mark our calendars? When fucking Pete apologized to, uh, and God forgive me, I'm so good at politics, the guy with the fucking eye patch, and brought him on and fucking, what's his Johnny name? Depp. Crenshaw. <laughs> Johnny Depp? No, Ben Crenshaw, the golfer. No, his name is Gretchen. And he was Johnny on, Depp. and the ringtone was, was already up the grande. That, that was hilarious. Was like in the Caribbean, he was a pirate. He was okay. So when Dread Pirates Robert was on, Roberts was on with him, and they drank yeah. rum and hit his gold. Um, yeah, in bits and pieces. But overall, you said it perfectly, Aaron. The, when when you think Thank Saturday you. Night Live, there's a big difference between what you're thinking in 1980, in 1990, and, and, and today, or even 2000. Yeah, for oh, sure. it's good. It's, it's not, good. They've it's had they've when had you funny think hot water. When you think wet spot, you think good. Sorry to talk over you, Chris. Yeah. Um, for people that don't know, what kind of inspired uh in hot water? Um, let me go first, Aaron, because I love telling this story. I said okay, this before. I'll keep uh, for trying to find memory on my phone. It's full. <laughs> well, here I'll I'll, I'll buy you some time. Yeah. I'm a firm believer that if you're Excuse on the right path, the unicorn. That's gone. Cobra <laughs> no. Kai season one. I don't need that anymore, right? Nope. I don't know, dude. That I show is so good. Cobra Kai. He loves it. It's okay, such a good. The new the new trailer show. came out. Did you see it? Yeah, yeah. I almost so wish good. I did. I almost wish I hadn't because they like it doesn't spoil it. But but yeah, Berg said to me last week. He's like like Cobra Kai. I'm like I haven't watched it, and he, his eyes got wide. He's like you haven't watched Cobra. Just watch it. I watched five minutes of it that night, and I called him so immediately. Good. Like and I'm just like you. Oh my god. Oh my God, you were right. So good. Um, but I would say that, like, it, it just do what you want and, and shit finds you. So years ago, we're uh, the back when- saying, You should make that a shirt. Do what you want and shit finds you. You really say yes. things. I, 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 I'm still waiting on the, the shirt that says make every day a day, live every day like a day. <laughs> that was our Arizona show. Oh yeah. That's so funny. I bump into Berg. We're, we're both at the stand. It was when they used to, uh, the old place, we used to both host. Uh, I, I, I don't do that so much anymore. But I'd hosted the early show. Berg comes in. He's like, do you do a podcast? It's like, this time of year. It is, because I used to do a Geno's Picks football podcast. And I said, yeah, but not much. And then I, sa I said, why? And he said, well, you know, someone asked me if I do a podcast. And I said, the only one I'd really want to do one with is you, is Gino. And I said, all right, uh, let's do one. And I didn't know how to do one until I did a show years ago and someone put everything on my laptop and Berg had no idea how to do it. You know, no disrespect, just, he's like, how do you do it? I'm like, I'll come over with my laptop and we'll just record it. And he goes, I have a hot tub. We'll do it in the hot tub, we'll call it in hot water, which we never did, but the name stuck and people think it's because we're always getting our shows in the hot water. So literally, if Berg is you guys, I turn around to the bar, because daddy likes to drink. Our, our dear friend, Jeffrey Gorian, is he dead yet, Aaron? 
No, he's survived alive. COVID. <laughs> he, he survived COVID, yeah. Yeah, so Gorian's right there, and we share the same birthday, which is what, Aaron? December 24th. <laughs> Is it the 29th or the 28th? 29th, Garrett's the 27th. Aaron's is the 15th of Hang June, on, one day before my access. Sorry, uh, the 15th of September, God forgive me, one day before my access. Uh, so I, so Jeffrey's like, Gino, he's like, what have you been up to? I'm like, me and Aaron Berger starting a podcast. He's got the thing called Comedy Matters. He's like, oh, let me get the info. He puts it out the next day on oh, the internet. For the Interabang. Yeah, for the Interabang. Is that even still a thing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's still up there. I don't know if he's posting as regularly to it. So then he does that. And, and then I'll give it to you because Aaron, then I didn't do anything except we started doing the podcast and Aaron just keeps fucking, you know, doing Aaron things, which is being motivated and driven and good at his- and Working start, out. Yeah, eating. starts this whole buzz. And and so people are talking about, and then I go to, I, I, so I do Opie and Anth I do Anthony's show for the first time. We've been doing it about a month. And I'm on with Bob Levy, and I do the show, and and I do great because we're good at this shit. He um, has, a, he's a partner in a law firm. No, you're thinking uh, Byron Brown, the anti-lawyer, lawyer, and Bob Levy. <laughs> so then a week later, Aaron goes on the show, absolutely crushes it, and he mentions he does a podcast with me. Uh, it's it's right as the skanks are leaving, so it's a couple weeks later, and I do it again, and and this is how I remember. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but but I hope. But I remember like, I used to go to LA for months at a time, for like a month at a time and just do my sports sheet, get drunk with uh, Bronston Jones before he fucking looked at me like I was Hitler. Uh, he's still, he's still a great guy. And so right as I'm leaving, fucking Keith the Cop comes up to me and says, hey, you and Aaron do a podcast together? I say, yeah. He's like, you ever think of doing it in a studio? And my mind is so getting on the plane to LA already. I go, yeah, we do it on my laptop at his place. It's great. And I leave. And then <laughs> I'm in LA. And a week later, Berg, am I exaggerating? Because I remember you calling me and, and I answered the phone. And he just goes, hey, dummy, did Keith offer us a job last week? And I said, I said, I don't, oh, you might have. I don't know. He's like, I just did Anthony's show. And he asked, he said he mentioned, I'm like, I don't know. And he just said, he hung up and he goes, he goes, I'll call you back. And he calls me back like an hour later. He's like, look, I think we're going to start working there. Blah, 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 blah. And uh, then he keeps starting all the buzz. And a week later, no, a couple of days later, he calls me back and he goes, remember this, Aaron? You're like, I got great news. Anthony's in rehab. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. And I'm like, what? He's like, he's in rehab, but they're going to have other people sit in for him. And they want us to sit in for a couple shows to roll out the show. And then we just started. Now, you forgot the part. And this is weird because Gino and I fought about this. Before we got the job, Keith sat me down and started showing me all these pictures of him as a cop. And uh, he really was like trying. He said he wanted to take me out to eat and stuff. And I was like, this is weird, but I'll do it to get on the network. And that's kind of how... <laughs> And I heard that I, I didn't want I left that people. out for a reason. I heard that this happened to other people later in the years and and one of them got mad at you and then called into our show and talked to you <laughs> and you backpedaled like crazy and said, No, no, I love her and Dude. I forgot who it was. But it was another girl, she has a show on the network. <laughs> And it's let, so let fun me to say, watch let... her. We started her on our show because she was this brilliant character. Yes! And she would come in and knock these characters out of the park. Yep. And it's just weird for me to be in the same position to be sexualized like that, to have to sit down next to this guy, this cop who I adored, who, you know, was a first responder who had this history. So I take his penis out of my mouth and I look up <laughs> and I go, look, I'm getting we got to do what we right got to do. Am I right? Keith the cock? And he goes, no, no, it's the cop. And I go, why did I just suck that? And this then I went. This is why Aaron's very funny and I just talk. <laughs> I, I stand by the, that. Because, uh, the be closet there, I right. stole a whole bunch of Michael Malice's cereal. Then I did some tricep <laughs> with a bunch of canned soda. And uh, I took a bus down to Florida. I broke into a Denny's. And uh, that's the last of it. So that's how I remember it. The rest well, is history. the record show that Christy got, and I stand by this, and this gets, thank you for setting me up to once again prove my point. I get very uh, passionate about my, my close friends and, and and you were so good on our show. I mean, thank it, you. It, it, the, I mean, I tried. Thing. What's that? I it was tried. So was Chrissy, but the garbage person woman and the, and the spike and the loyalty, right? So when I walk in, and don't get me wrong, I love that you called in and you're like, Gene, I did a lot of, and, 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 and no one gets a follow except me because I had such a following. Yeah, without a doubt but I stand by this. I walk in, 
like, remember when you said, I got, I've got a meeting with Keith, the cop, and I'm going to be, I might get a show. I'm like, that's great. Like there's this, there's this puff out your chest. We're so good that she's so good on our show. She's going to show. And then I walk in and, and Chrissy, was he not showing you pictures of, of, uh, uh, this, I used to work for a sheet. What does this have to do with getting you a job? I used to, he showed me the, pictures. oh, the pictures of him. Sure. Yeah, he used to he used to work like private security gigs for, um, you know, I guess like Arabian princes and the yeah, yeah. which is okay. What does it cool. mean? Very clear. We all love Keith. We would yes. not. Uh, yeah. Have yes. But don't do your 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 fucking alpha male bullshit. Just be like, you know, I walk in like, he's like, look, look at it. He showed her, this is what got me. He showed her a, 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 a block of money wrapped in plastic. Am I right? This is how he would carry his money. You don't remember that or did he? Oh, because he showed it to me. Really? No, I don't remember that. You were there. I'm not, I, I couldn't make this up. And, and I'm sitting there like, what are you doing? And, and I was very, you know, I'm, I get very, uh, I, I'm not shy with my feelings. Uh, so I was very angry. And that's what I was talking about on that podcast. But even that turned into gold because you called on a gum Friday on my landline, remember? And, and like, oh, yeah. and I said, call back on the main line. And and the the two minutes we're waiting for you to call, and they're like, it's like when you got in trouble in third grade, like Garrett, Steve, and Aaron are like, ooh, ooh, it was great, it was great. Well, yeah, oh, because you made it sound like I only got a show because somebody may or may not have like, yeah. And if you and if you thought that you should. You, and once again, you didn't talk behind my back saying, I'm like, you're like, Gino thinks, I'm like, and you called me immediately. That's what family does. They don't they don't send a, a text message in the text thread before they show and say new number, who this? That's, that's what oh, they God. texted. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's like, it, it, like the time for a conversation about what you want to do or, or maybe you wanted to get something else out of a show. It's like the time for that conversation is not after you quit. It's yeah. it's before that. Uh, say, excuse me one second. Aaron, I never tell that part of the story. You said, what did you do with Keith the cop? You fucked him in a closet? No, I said I sucked his penis. Oh, okay. All right, back to you, Chrissy. I'm sorry. I get I just, my I, mouth. I'll, I'll tell, I'll add that into the story because I always leave that out. I skip over that. <laughs> Yeah, it's good times though. Yeah, we miss him. We miss Keith. Um, nice guy. I mean, that's the thing is like, I've had so many different jobs over the years and whoever you're interviewing with or pitching to, it's like, they want to show you pictures of them. Like, you know, you're going to be like, okay, that's great. You know? No, you're I'm a hot chick. No. You, you get that. Keith did not, and Anthony, no one showed us any pictures. Uh, they just said, hey, can you tell dick, dick jokes uh, an hour and a half a week at, on Tuesdays at two? And we said, we're your guys. <laughs> Where are you guys? And it's not just that. Um, I mean, we uh, we're not going to say like what what company, but like you know, we did it. We had an interesting gig last night. We had to do a holiday party over Zoom, and I'd never done one before. And you did great, uh, you you guys did great. It was fun. It was definitely a, a new experience because you, you got to have to like. It's there's what twenty different squares of audience to look at and and like it's it's hard to pick on somebody when all you have is just like their background and what they're wearing and what they look like. I mean, in a sense, it's kind of no different than a room full of people, but it's it's definitely a different muscle. Well, I was telling you, Chrissy, afterwards, like, because Bird put me. uh, Bird's right about everything. Like, if you watch the show when this all locked us, I'm like, I'm not doing a Zoom. I'm not doing a park and everything. Uh, He got me on one of everything. He fucking and every time I'm like, yeah, you're right. I'm wrong. It's great. But the first Zoom I did, Bird's like, hey, do a guest spot on this Zoom a couple weeks ago. And I told you this. It was great because you look at the Zoom screen. You see, you see, like, you know, the however many it is. It's like what twenty or thirty a screen, and you see actual people like this with their names that match up to Twitter. And you're like, oh my God, this is a home game. And they all leave their mics on instead of muting them and you hear them laughing. And I only had to do like 10 minutes. It was great. Uh, but I felt like yesterday, a lot of people had their, their things off. You know what I mean? At one point, were you watching when I did crowd work to a guy that was <laughs> just a very high res picture of his face that he wasn't even on? Yeah. Yeah, you were trying to crowd work people who were like leaving and then you'd be like, ah, oh, that could come back. Yeah, and, and by then- the time I go up at the end, I'm like, Chris is like, well, they were tired, they were getting, they were leaving. I'm like, I don't know. Like I told a black joke and the black guy laughed 
and then I went one back. black guy and you ruined yeah, it. Yeah, a black <laughs> a black couple who were very cute and they're laughing. And then I looked like five minutes later, if that, and and it's just the fucking icon picture. I'm like, did I walk the black people? You know, and it's know. tough because they what they did was like their and their holiday like end of year meeting. You walk the black um, people. <laughs> And it was end of end of end of holiday year, you know, Zoom meeting. They gave out awards for an hour, and then they had us go on, yeah, do like an hour plus show. So mm-hmm. pe- I think people were already starting to check out. I think when yeah. Gino went on, uh, dude, I've done, and again, me rubbing your nose is my success. I've done many a fire hall where they say, "Oh, and we're gonna do the fifty fifth, we're gonna do the Chinese auction, and then we're gonna do the comedy show." I'm like, "No, you're not." No, you're not. And and I and, and there's the other times I've I've again you're doing it and there's a 50 uh, Chrissy Brown someone. Hang on. Oh, she was changing the hat. I'm changing my hat. Uh, and and again, not to brag, like I've learned this is my experience from the road. Like uh you'll be doing uh a, a show and they a lot of these fire halls will do uh these benefits, they'll do a 50-50 raffle. Oh yeah. You know? They and, love their raffles. Right, but you'll have people and they're good, but you'll have and I'm like, you don't do that to the end. You make everyone stay. So you hold them hostage, literally, because you've got 80-year-old people sitting there looking at their tickets. They don't even want to be there, but they don't want to miss their chance out on 85 bucks. So it's just like like and you look at like, what's what? that? I want in. I want in too. <laughs> yeah. Where, where's I the like- ticket? I like eighty-five. Oh, to do the three of us at a, at a fucking fire hall. You please look at no, me. No, I want to buy one of the raffle tickets. I'm not selling yeah. raffle tickets. I'm telling a story about how they use like raffle 50, tickets. 50, like fifty percent goes to a charity, and then I win the other fifty. That's exactly how it goes there. Wow. Okay, I want in. It's yeah, not me a too. thing, Aaron. You have to you have to be on. Just so show. you know, because you guys want to get jealous, I am in St. Petersburg beachfront. Yeah. Oh my. Oh no. Are they just Stop building it. the beach? Yeah, Aaron, I was going to ask you where you were. <laughs> that's what it looks. Wow, it's beautiful. That's, that's what it. That's actually what it looks like out one of my windows. How funny is that? It looks like an adult yeah. sandbox. Yeah. What's that? You know, give me two. Two what? I'll tickets. take two of the tickets. No, I'm not selling the tickets. I was I was telling a story. Yeah, I'll take two you also. One? No, yeah. I, no one's getting I mean, tickets. Is there a deal like five for 20 or something? No, no one's getting, t- that's not what I meant. That's not what I meant. All right, I'm not even doing it. I thought I'm this stuck. was about the raffle tickets. I'm not doing the raffle. That's a, that's a completely different thing. Uh, Chrissy, how's it going? I Here's what I see. I see, I want you to be, this is how you will attain the most success. In my Ooh, Oh God, I'm going to take notes. Yeah, he's okay. good. This guy's I good. I want you to be like uh, a Tommy... Lauren type figure, but She's hot. Yeah. Okay. okay right step down, one: dye my hair right blonde. Right down. Be hot. Be hot. <laughs> yeah. And then I want you to continue doing what you're doing, but we need to tweak it a little bit. So I watched oh. the one we went to the gym in New Jersey. Okay. Go in loaded for bear in these situations, and I also think if you present a bit of the opposite side more like be like, well, what about the people that are super scared to be in here and stuff like that? If you take that on for a minute and be like, suppose that I had diabetes and blah, blah, blah. Um, That's what I want to see. I want to see, I want to see precise, poignant political commentary with more sexuality than Tommy Lauren has. Really? Yes. And then that's your thing. Are you saying that like, doesn't sound that doesn't sound Aaron? super funny though? But maybe I don't think just... it has to be funny. Okay, you, it doesn't have to be laugh out loud funny. You just put like little. You put in what you have to put in. Sexual jokes. Why do you care how funny it is when it's just like get to put in the funny when you want to put in the funny? It doesn't have to be straight through funny. If you want to be straight through funny, then you go to the. Antilles gym or whatever, and you go in like with a onesie on, and you try right, and do right. Your deadlifts That's and true. Stuff. So that more, I should be more sec in my interviews. I should be more sexual and maybe uh, a little bit argue the opposite political side. Yeah, and also no, go do your research, spend your time. That's going to be the difference between making it big and just kind of fluffing your way through it know exactly what you're going in with, know all the names, know all the political viewpoints of the people that you want to involve or take down, uh, have all the dirt on them and go after it. Mm, okay. Yeah. So you're just saying, just be better. 
<laughs> do what I you're doing it's, just better. <laughs> it's. I mean, I think it's a great direction. Do you feel confident going in that direction? Yeah, I mean, I'm already kind of there. So how are you dealing with your blowback? Like when you look at examples of like these weird chubby boy ladies that are comics that like come after you and they're like, Christy's a crazy Q person. How do you I don't even mind them. I don't I don't pay attention really. Like I think because it's not like I would take the advice of somebody who I admire who's like doing really well, such as yeah. yourself, Aaron. So it's like I'm not really paying attention to the people who are behind me or be below me or whatever, or like yeah. just starting out. Um, I, I like the element of like, yeah, I mean, I'm all for free speech. I think that's how I got into it. I'm like, yeah, I want to I want to interview the guy in New Jersey who's keeping his gym open. Like, I want to go to these protests and see what like what's really happening instead of like what we're being fed by mainstream media. I like getting to know people. Do you like not being liked? How do you feel about not? Oh, you <laughs> Who doesn't like me? Um, I'm like, I'm I, I could I could list people. You go to like a Sam Ruddy or somebody, you know, that little. Fucking oh, cluster but, but of, what has she ever like done for me you know what i mean like the people who don't like you it's like that they're probably eats a mean pussy it's not for sure yeah yeah maybe she could uh but yeah me. like when you look at those but do you just write them off initially and just go okay they're they're not doing anything i don't care or do you ever think about these things because they'll be uh, when i get it now uh, i'll look at like andrew schultz who's like killing it yeah and you'll see like all the praise thrown on by like people that know mm -hmm. and then other people are like he's a damn racist he blah blah and then like you watch uh that no name guy the canceler in la or wherever he lives now Seth? And he'll write, oh, we're not saying his name i'm sorry no name canceler <laughs> the no sorry buddy what'd you say i think i said his name and you didn't want us to oh you said his name when i didn't Before. never mind no hold yeah, on i'm muting so i can fart really loud oh why don't you just <laughs> you have to lift your leg up? Yeah. Why do you doesn't it? understand that some people, their only currency is when people like us mention them. And once oh, you, that, okay. you don't say their names, Gino's a, Gino's a slow learner. I'm a slow learner too, in some aspects, but it's like, he gets so angry. He's like, no, I want to, cause you're saying I can't. So yeah. that's why he does it, but he doesn't yeah. realize it hurts him and helps them. Trolls love it. Yeah, they but love. They literally live for. They would have no attention if it weren't for us. But isn't but that at the a, point now it, where these cancelers almost do the job of our publicists for us? Where it's like you're getting free publicity, yeah. even though it's bad, but it's putting eyes on stuff. I remember uh, some girl that here's a good test, Gino, that made up <laughs> these allegations <Listen. laughs> like of harassment. She posted a video. Mm -hmm of in hot water it got like thirty five thousand views in a day wow was, oh, we get way more thank you that's great yeah. and our subs went up and our patreon went up um but it's it's weird because i used to want to be liked by everybody and then once you get over Me that too. you're like oh it should be more of a 50 50 thing and then both of those numbers go up but there's also that yeah. worry you don't have a kid you have uh frank's kids right how many kids he, one or two he has a kid yeah one Kids like yeah. ten, right? And, and we have a, a turtle. We have a turtle. Yeah. I know oh, yeah. stuff. You ever fuck the turtle? No, and no. I were... sometimes stick my finger by his mouth to see if he'll bite my finger, but no, he won't. Uh, what is? What is? You ever? You ever tease the kid and go, "If you don't shut up, this is gonna be soup." No, no. First of all, she would say bully. Wouldn't she say bully bays instead of soup? You want the so kid here's to learn. what happened. Here's my fear, and I, I think about this because of what happens with. Uh, would happen with like a Gavin McInnes, you know, who went so far and then to have, you know, his neighbors being like, we don't want this guy around. And I'm worried sometimes about that in my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I got a lot of honger neighbors and uh, <laughs> go, they probably and don't know. Like they probably, you know what I mean? Like, I think unless you get to like, I don't know, Burke Kreischer, Sebastian Maniscalco level, most regular people don't know comedians. Yeah, yeah. There's some subculture people. Like I have a guy on my street that, you know, I think he subscribes or watches. Or is that your neighbor that lives there. twenty-four doors down, Aaron? He's about twelve doors down, <laughs> uh, but he's a neighbor. But uh, yeah, that fear is that, like, you know, in Gavin's neighborhood, they started putting up those "hate doesn't live here" signs and stuff, and, they, oh and Gavin couldn't even sell his house. So wow. there's a bit of that fear of the hatred. And then uh, last week we got a Grubhub delivery, and the guy shows up. He's like Grubhub for 
Piper B. And I'm like, Piper doesn't have a Grubhub account. So Christine gets on the ring camera. I'm like, did you order Grubhub? And she's like, no. And I'm like, fucking someone hacked her Grubhub account. They know my address. What? Over. Oh, and man. Then, what kind of food did they order? So I'm freaking out. And I want to blame her because I'm like, this is because you're fucking always talking to those weird Nigerian guys on Facebook Messenger. And then uh, and then it turned out it was just a <laughs> gift someone had sent to us that was for Piper. But we said no to oh. it twice and sent them home. And then they came back. Oh, so my God. Back. What was the gift? uh jewish cookies like hanukkah cookies Aww. and uh these little bagel donuts that's cute yeah is it right. still is it still hanukkah it's over yesterday was the last day oh. my wife lit the candles good for her she was complaining a little she's like i gotta get up and i was like come on get the fuck up you have to do it early in the morning tell me that i don't know that what you have to get up early and do the yeah. candles? Or no, she didn't want to get up off the couch. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> I love your wife. I'm, and I'm I, gonna I had to hold back from going, I can't wait till fucking Christmas day when I don't open any fucking presents to get you back. Ooh. That, now, is could... that a good... It's... Silver hour, what's that, half gram? Yeah, the yep. A marijuana what? vape in a Ooh. store in Florida. You know what's better than a marijuana vape is Lucy nicotine gum. Oh, mm. tell me about it. Yeah, it was actually um, <clears throat> founded by Caltech scientists and former smokers looking for a better and cleaner nicotine alternative. Toltec, T-O-L-T-E-C? Caltech. Uh, there, there's four milligrams of nicotine in three flavors, and I've been chewing on these, and let me tell you, I might be getting addicted. <laughs> but I didn't think nicotine you smoked. Out. No, I don't. They're just the sponsor for the episode. So you just started chewing nicotine gum? Because it's the sponsor. I want to be supportive. <laughs> no. Yes. What flavors? Um, pomegranate, wintergreen, and cinnamon. And they don't at all taste. They don't even taste. Oops, there's gum stuck to it. But you're chewing nicotine. Didn't we yeah. get a methadone? I've never done heroin, but I think we have a methadone sponsor now. Is that right? Is that right, Aaron? Yeah. Uh, They're good. They're really good. Marty oh, McFly yeah. methadone. That's not a thing. So good, it'll take you back to the future. That's, okay, I'm all, okay. Um, to answer, you guys sponsor. watch Andrew Schultz's special that came out? No, I haven't. I want do to. Do you watch comedy specials, Chrissy? I like, I don't I watch do. a lot of them. I do, I'll watch them. Like yeah. I was telling Aaron Dorn, I watch, I always watch Nate Bargatze specials because my niece and nephew, I turn them on to him because he's like so. They're kids, like, he's man. Of mine. I'm like, he's so doing? clean. And, and Becky owns like stuff I'll watch because they're great, you know, but I don't get into these spe like I know they're great. Like Chappelle's brilliant. I'll watch Burr specials because I'll, I'll watch specials of guys I know because it's it's about me. I'm like, yeah, this is guy's great. I, I knew he was, you know what I mean? But it's like, I don't, it, I don't you know watch Andrew the Schultz. specials. I don't. You don't know Andrew Schultz? I know Andrew Schultz you and I, watch, I will watch like it. I just haven't gotten around to it. There's, but I, uh, there's shades of you in it. Mm. There's and jokes. if I were funny? No, there's jokes that you would do that are in it. There's a lot. I'll of watch it jokes. today because you're always right about this. Show. I will definitely. I have nothing to do today other than this and and a Gum Friday uh, bonus. Yeah, yeah, Gino, you should be more political, be more sexual. Um, you know, dye your hair blonde. I think that would help. Here's what we do: dye your hair blonde. I want you to start wearing on stage overalls with no t-shirt or like a a tank Ooh. top, and just go out and be like, yeah. And a lot Dude. of the time, be like, who wants to fuck? And that's that. great bonus content i would do that because my hair grows quickly knockwood do you want right. to come in one day chrissy and dye my hair blonde for bonus content yes of course i would love to I'm let's so do that down. one week yeah let's do it so um but to get getting back to what you said aaron about like dealing with hate it's like when you look at the people who are if they're comics you know if they're giving you shit it's like you look at them you're like is this someone that would have ever helped me would have ever been on like team chrissy or team aaron or team gino the answer is always no and it's like who should you be surrounding yourself with people who believe in what you're doing who appreciate your message your sense of humor um and the people that are going to give you shit are never it's never anybody that would have given you an opportunity or helped you or even understands your brand so it's like it's just noise. Like these people are crumbs. And uh, it is. And it's like, until you're getting that, you don't, you, it's weird that you're like, oh, I guess I'm starting to make it now when it's like that hate starts to come. And you're like, oh, this is, this is kind of fun. Yeah. People are just, you said it, it all it's, still comes back to the work. It's all like, 
it all still cut. Look, I wrote a brilliant new joke uh, yesterday. I'm staying in a hotel with a bunch of female bodybuilders, so I've been seeing a lot of cocks. <laughs> Oh, that's not bad. Dude, my new joke is uh, on brand. I said, Big dicks. Big old dicky dicks. They whip them out. They got big old dicky dicky dicks. My joke dicky is on dicks. brand. Is I'm like, dick, dick, dicky dicks. I dick, said, I'm not, dick. I'm not saying we're heading down the wrong path, but the last I call bit, <laughs> the Biden era. What do you, you think? guys, are you guys signed up for my pillow text messages? Uh, Cause I know Mike Lindell, he's a, he's a friend of compound media. Like I literally get texts multiple times a day from like my pillow, like sales. I'm about to just like save this number as like dad or something. Just so I feel like loved. Here's a tip for you. Save it under, even, even though you like them. Whenever I want, like I save things under faggot and cunt because your <laughs> voicemail, your text to speech. I don't know if you won't say those words. But if it's a contact, it's like, oh, they must be talking about this contact. So now I have a, that, that guy that prank texted me a week ago. I changed his name. I saved the number and made it faggot. So now not only do I know whenever he's texting me, but when I say faggot, I don't have to go back and change F-A-G-E-T to F-A-G-G-O-T in my speech. To Thank you so much for making that point and demonetizing this video. Thanks, Gino. Yeah. <laughs> Can't you bleep it? But that's no, another I don't thing do any editing. On. I don't edit. We're, we're heading down the wrong path. The last person that made his essential worker wear, workers wear masks was Hitler, but they had to if they wanted to live. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Totally. I think you need to explain the joke. There's some reason it's not working. See, Hitler killed about a thousand Jews during the Holocaust. That's it? And he did it by smothering them with a my pillow. <laughs> what? Did you know that? You no. mean gas masks. <laughs> They would wear gas masks. And when they were smothering them with a my pillow, the, the, the Jews would fart because they were gassy because they overfed them. Mm. So they gave them such a high protein diet to keep them healthy so they could work in the Mercedes plant and make Aaron's wonderful car <laughs> that he that his wife loves to drive because I've borrowed hers and haven't given it back yet. Well, they would get so gassy they'd fart while being suffocated with the my pillow. So you'd need a gas mask. Oh, That's gonna okay. be a killer bit when you get back on stage in four years. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's so what, mean. See, so you're we, mean. Your brand is mean to me. <laughs> we've discussed what we would do to tweak my image. How would we tweak Gino's image? I mean, I think he looks good. Like you lost weight. You cut. Gino your has to double him. down on it. He has yeah. to just be like, I'm the conservative comedian, and he mm. has to try. He has to get rid of his old stuff. That's a problem. That's a weight around his neck. That's that's the albatross. What's his old world. stuff? Around, he's got to get rid of his old jokes, the Holocaust jokes. He's got to move on from. But see, I would argue, I would argue, and honest to God, we joke. They're like, oh, gee, every, like they're different jokes about the Holocaust. And I always, and speaking of doubling down, I say like the Holocaust, I went to Anne Frank's museum in Amsterdam in the late 90s. I, and it upset me so much. Honest to God, I didn't want to go. I was the typical fucking, you know, Tourist, I was with two chicks and I'm like, let's go to the, uh, we're in Amsterdam, I'm like, let's go to the Van Gogh, what's that? You brought girls to the Anne Frank Museum? Them. I met these girls, because I was, I used to be very cool when I was backpacking through don't Europe. Don't take girls to the Anne Frank Museum. No, I that's a boner killer. Was Burger King. It was their it idea. Turned on, I, want, I was there to pick up pussy. <laughs> Where is this four days a week? Honest to God, I was backpacking through Europe. I met these girls in Paris uh, that were friends of mine from the States. And they said, let's take a train to Amsterdam. So I'm like, all right, let's go to the Van Gogh Museum where Great. I found love with Van Gogh. Nash and Young song. Which is actually where I got that lithograph of the artist's bedroom. You have a lithograph, can... Gino, in your bedroom? I never would have guessed that you have a lithograph. Of, of, of fucking uh, the artist's bedroom. Uh, all my artwork, it's Van Gogh and three paintings by my niece, which are, it doesn't matter. And an orange bedspread. I went there and I wanted to go to the Van Gogh Museum and of course a coffee shop and get high. And the two girls are like, we should go to the Anne Frank Museum. I'm like, I didn't even know it was there, of course. I'm like, what are you talking about? They're like, this is where she hid in Amsterdam. And I've said this before, I'll say it again. I went there and if you've ever been, there's a moment where all the adjectives fall away and you don't sit there, at least I didn't. It was one of the most moving moments of my life. I wasn't like, wow, I can't believe we, uh, the Jews got killed by these Germans. In that moment, I was like, all, it's like, we let all we let these people kill all these other people. And there's a moment where you're embarrassed to be a people, to be a human. So like I make jokes about it because we're comics and that's how you deal with it. And it'll never stop. 
bothering me. And that's why I'm doubling down on the coronavirus shit because I'm not saying I'm right, but you can't convince me otherwise. This is bullying at its purest form. You know, I'm going to the French Laundry, but you people fucking stay inside. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm fucking gonna going out to you, dinner, but you shut down restaurants. Bully and, you out of having a business. Happens. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 that's what I mean. So, like, I, everyone's like, oh, he does the same joke. It's not. Like, the essential worker joke is a completely different joke about the Holocaust. And I'm not defending my act. It's just, you said it, Aaron. It's work, but it's got to be fun. This, what we're doing right now, this is work to a lot of people. Right now, people are like, oh, how great are those three? They got up on a Friday and they 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 work. No, we didn't. We're <laughs> fucking around. And and my act will never change, but it's always changing. And when people are like, Gino does the same act. Have you ever heard me go, no, I don't? I'm like, yep, I do the same act. The same act, exact same. Dude, if I did the same act, I'd still be doing Wawa jokes. You know why it's called Wawa, Aaron? Because come three in the morning, that's all you can say. Dude, you want to go to Mick? Want to go to Wawa? And here's another great one. Uh, you know why it's called a neon, Aaron? The the Dodge neon. You know why? <laughs> this is a really uh, specific that's, car that's, joke. I used to, yeah. You know why? Because the car is so small, your knee is on everything. <laughs> hey, I want to know who are your guys' favorite guests to come on in hot water. Please don't feel pressured to say me, but like, I want to know in the whole time you've been doing it in hot water, who are your favorite guests? Who are your least favorite guests? Kendra, Kendra was Fox the least favorite Graham. guest. Kendra's Kendra was Sunderland? the least favorite guest. And and that is how great, we always say it now, me and Berg, at least I use it. We say it's just me and Berg cracking each other up. Now it's just, I, I think the show, for me at least, it's it's me trying to make the other five or six people laugh. And that's Aaron, Steve, Garrett, fucking Bobby, even Luby. But Kendra was such a dud. <laughs> and she's like, ooh, look at my tits. And did she Kendra, come to your show like super high as well? Because she did my show. I get, was the she here? I've ever seen a person. Yeah. yeah she was high. And she, uh, she was offended beautiful. by a school shooting joke. Oh. <laughs> she got so, oh my God. I forgot. She got so mad. She goes, uh, cause I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm asking her real questions. And I'm like, you know, when you show up for a shoot, like, you know, and she goes, well, you know, it, if is it a, a girl on guy shoot or or this or that? And Berg's like, what if it's a school shooting? And, she, <laughs> and I'm laughing insanely. And she, I'm going to tell you something you might not have noticed, Aaron. She really, uh, really funny. turned off at that point. She was a little offended by you. <laughs> yeah. How do you not just automatically uh, laugh Larry at that? Sharp. Larry Sharp is a great guest. He is. Yeah, he can talk. He's very, he's a smart guy and he can hang. Like for someone who is someone who's run for office, like he should be a total drip, but he's the opposite. He can hang. He like right away understood like the gist of your show, the gist yeah. of my show, the, the gist of compound media. He can hear the most disgusting jokes. Like he'll laugh, but he also like maintains his professional vibe. Yesterday or a couple weeks ago, we had, uh, a uh, guy that used to play for the Yankees, a sober guy. So I told him uh, I respected his sobriety and he didn't look like he drank. And then it turned out, I guess he drunk drive killed somebody. Oh no, what's his name? Aaron, Aaron go back and watch it. Cause me and Garrett were talking about it before the Babe show. Ruth. <laughs> Dude, it, it, what, no, the, I'll say his name cause it wasn't his fault. It's this guy, Jim Layritz was on literally Thursday and he's doing all this charity work. He was in San Diego, he was driving under the influence, right? But like, like I look, I'm gonna brag. Like barely, I he was a 1.14. Right, and and he's That's he's probably drunk. like under that the influence, like not but, fully. So get this, he's in a car accident with another car, and here's the, here's how here's how you would read it. He's in a when it happened, he's in a car accident, hits another car. The woman's not wearing a seatbelt, flies through the windshield, dies. So they charge him with vehicular homicide. They're like, oh my god, you're drunk, blah blah blah. Well, when they finally fucking you know take her dead blood. Turns out she was a 0.18. She was drunk driving from her bartending job, fucking slammed into him. Wow. And fucking died. So everything ended up going away. You know, it's like he got a, but it's like she was drunker driving. But the, right. but all that aside, we're talking to him and Berg goes, you look like a guy that doesn't drink. Maybe you enjoy a brandy at home or something. And me and Gary, and he just like, smiles because he's such a good guest. You know what I mean? But it was, um, then he went out, I read the paper, and drove drunk right That's after that. That's not what happened. First of all, you show me the paper you read. Because it, it had to be in the past 24 hours. Show me the newspaper. <laughs> That's a mask. 
that's that's a mask. Aaron, There's did you get a nice big king bed? Do you have to share your room with anybody? That's no, not the I newspaper. Never, I would never share my room with anybody. Uh, the the theater took care of the rooms. The hotel's nice. I usually upgrade, but I was like, I don't need to. I'm here for two nights. What am I gonna? I already spent some money on the road. I bought some nice cigars and I Ooh. got a steak from Del Frisco's. And then I'm gonna I said, interrupt I him to tell pigs. you, Chrissy, that he doesn't have women over, but he takes pictures and sends them to his wife like he's about to have an orgy or something. He, he tell her what, tell her what you did with that. But like, open up your bed and be like, tell her the picture. This this is this is a segment called Gino is Aaron's aunt at the dinner table. Tell Chrissy the bit you did where you sent your wife the picture of you. What picture of me? You, you <laughs> fucking he worked oh, out. Oh, I took a Minutes. selfie, Chrissy. Look, hang on. You worked at the hotel? No, I took a sexy selfie to send to my wife. Ooh, shirtless? Yeah. Nice. I'm not looking bad. I'm a little smooth. I've just cut carbs. That's going to happen for about a month. Are you doing keto? Look. Oh, hey. Oh, my goodness. The the people who are. But Chrissy, you understand he's on the road. He, he sends that picture to his wife. He shaves his chest. So he looks like. Guys, this is an urgent call about my car warranty. Hang on. Ugh. Put him on. Is it spam? Like another time, he'll just he'll send a picture of his wife. He'll send his wife a picture of like his his trim pubes in the toilet. He's like, "Hey, I trim my pubes." Look good, you send- Berg. Oh, I'm cool. Woo! Jack Why would you boy. send that to your wife when you're on the road? Why wouldn't you fucking when you're home with your wife do so that? She has something into- to, to masturbate to. Yeah. Why wouldn't you take How that? How do I look? How would you rate that body? Ten. Ten out of ten. Come on. Eleven out of ten. No, really. No, for real. You look you look awesome, Aaron. You look great there, Aaron. Good. All kidding aside, yes. you do. Because I feel fat. Any kind of muscle definition is a big turn on. You don't. Even, I mean, really? you're and you're extra jacked. Yeah, maybe I just have incredibly low standards, but yeah, you look great. I feel like I look okay, but I feel like it's not the best. To even but should I send it to people? Who should I send it yeah, to? Yeah, it's the holiday season. If you have any kind of muscle definition during the holidays, I mean, that's great. You have abs. You look, yeah. you look strong. You look badass. You look like you're, you could be a, you're a proud boy who just took their shirt off. And what it looks like you're, I send it to? It looks like you're wearing a hat so you could send it to other women who may not know you're bald. Yeah, you know what? You should send that to like people be like, do you, do you like my hat? And then it's yeah. you just fucking with your jacked chest. Okay. I'm gonna work out more. I'm cutting carbs. I'm gonna get in real shape. I got it. I got uh, inspired because all the NPC national people were at the hotel. Oh, yeah. really? Committee. Yeah, they look great. Do you just have to eat real boring, like powder and eggs and stuff? And then I think just I'm gonna cut carbs for a few weeks. I've been eating carbs. When you get married, you eat carbs because it's, it's just like easier because the they're cheaper. You have is like you sit on the couch and watch a show. Then you just stuff popcorn in your face. Well, there's a reason the phrase is called "you're fat and happy." You know, you're you, you, you fucking you're not trying to impress anyone. You're with your fucking life partner. You're fucking your priority is not oh I gotta fucking wake up. You're like I got I have to wake up and fucking have breakfast with my daughter. You know, y- your priorities change. But when you look good and you feel sexy, that if that has a ripple effect in every aspect of your life, you know what yeah, I mean? I like. I, I want to. That's the thing is, like, sense. I'm gonna buy myself some nice lingerie. I mean, like, I did get some recently from a fan, but like, I'll probably buy myself some even nicer shit, and I'll just be like, yeah, bitch. Yeah, see, we get cigars and steaks from fans, which are great. They must send you some fucking really kinky shit. Woo! I just got some gray lingerie, like a teddy one piece with a. What, I thought it was a headband, but really, it's a necklace. Uh, it's like this little piece of like lacy thing with a string, and I was like, "Yeah, I hey, this? I watched the show uh, Monday night. I saw you try it on. Yeah, I, I was like, like I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put it over my we, clothes. Yeah. I have to apologize that we didn't. We okay, of course we have a headband for you. What? She doesn't have an in hot water headband. My cigar's done. Well, I didn't get an in hot water headband, and I missed the it's boat. Not, I there's a, a COVID is the flu with a better publicist shirt. Yeah, that cigar's done, Gene. Um, do you? Would you take a picture of yourself in the lingerie and send it to the person that sent it to well, you? Well, he asked for that. And uh, I think that would be something Frank would be opposed now, to. Now, what is Frank? Because Frank's your boyfriend. He's awesome. Uh, what is he, th- he? Like, I would imagine he's like, yeah, do it. 
he's cool with me receiving gifts from people. I don't think he's cool with me sending a picture of me in the lingerie to the dude. Yeah, yeah, I don't correct. know the, the the line there, but I know he trusts you. I like I think if you sent it to him, I could see him being pissed, but I also don't think he'd be like, Well, are you gonna fuck this guy? You're not think- in a relationship. I'm not. I get it. I'm getting married. Didn't that's you give me a list and not want off? It what? doesn't matter if you trust somebody, that's piss off fuel. Hmm. Right, because but- it's like you're trying to turn on some other dude. When I should just, you know, send, I, could just now, Gene, I mean, I did take a picture of myself in it and I sent it to him and I was like, here I am. Oh, that's great. Gray yeah. Lingerie. Um, yeah. And it was, it was even like a little loose on me. I was like, yeah, girl, you're a hot bitch. And then I'll go do some push ups, and then, you know, I've got sound problems. Can you hear me? Perfectly. Yeah. Sounds weird. Sounds like I can't cool. hear you. What? Hear you. Oh man. Yeah. Tell you another thing I hate about this air. What? Buying some time. Buying some time. Okay, so we heard our favorite and least favorite guests. I I also want, while he's doing this, I'll throw a shout out to- How's that? Good. We can hear you great, right? Good. I'll also throw a shout out to two guests. Shout out to- There you go. Go. That I like. uh, we had Natalie Cuomo and Amanda Gale on our shows first. Love and them. they're great, you know, and I did the Comedians of the Compound with them. Saturday Night Gino, he got fucked up, but they crushed it. And it was like the first time the fans really got to watch them. And they were like, these guys are great. And it was like one of those moments like, yeah, they're funny. We don't just have mom because, you know, they're good looking chicks. Who are your favorite characters that have ever been on the show? Uh... Greta Joe Thunberg. Biden's really kick, uh, kicking No, it doesn't ass, have like, to be a, cr- a character that I've done, but uh, it could just be anybody. The go- well, the, go- the trash girl was great. And it doesn't have to be me. Don't feel pressured. Name. Restaurant, Chrissy. Don't feel pressured. Uh, Gabby Hoffman. <laughs> the Dueling Gabby's episode was pretty fucking epic. Like, Gabby herself is one of the best. Ga- that episode, that, that's in hot water at its finest, Aaron, where she walks in and we're trying to get rid of her. And about five minutes in, Berg's like, Berg just leaves the desk. He's like, we're not getting rid of her. We're doing the hour. I like, miss Gabby. I miss, I, I'm so sad. Like, cause she moved out. She was right across the street from, not across the street, across the hall from Compound Media. She had her fucking weird jewelry company set up there and she's moved out. She's been out like at least a year at this point and the space is still empty. Like we'll go in there and like, you know, smoke, whatever weed Dude, sometimes well that's another thing about the show that i love because i make fun of it i mean we joke about it on the show because you know i'm at the desk so when they so when gay porn pops up everyone's like why does gene keep showing gay porn and i'm the only one who has nothing to do with it but that's the show it's like it's like i'm in the host seat but i'm far from the host like a perfect example was what was it like two fridays ago gum friday berg's like well let's open up making fun of my poetry for bonus content. And then we're <laughs> then we're 15 minutes in and Berg just looks at me and he goes, this is the show, we're just gonna keep going. And it's an hour of it. And I'm sitting on the side chair. Is that a yarmulke? Is that a new yarmulke, Berg? Yeah, that's terrible. What is that? It's a mask. So yeah, so that, that evolves into some of the best guests. Like Joe Biden's like, right now the best is Joe Biden. Fucking Steve <laughs> doing Rapesh just doesn't go away. Like we used to have, like Isis Faggot, when it first started Flyover Phil, <laughs> Huge guest people still love. Yeah. But it, it, they evolve. It's like the Peanuts comic strip. Everyone makes evolve. fun of me. Like, evolve. What? Evolve. Thank you. That's the essence of comedy now. Excuse me? Is to evolve. Evolve. Thank you. That's- so then you get these guests that just kind of fall by the wayside because there's newer guests and there's we just don't have time for Isis Fag. It doesn't, doesn't fall into the, you know, the fray of it. You know? He's so it's like... The, it's, it's like the current yeah. ones have to be fucking Rapesh uh, and fucking Biden. They're the they're fucking hysterical, you know? Who are your and, least and favorite characters? Anal Ben Pooper. Okay. <laughs> no, yeah. no, he's wrong. Ber- this is what Berg does. Like, Berg will sit there at night and he'll get this idea. And when he thinks, over, he, he overthinks it, he'll show up and he's like, He's like, this is gonna be the greatest character ever. And he'll do one joke and it won't work. And then I'll be <laughs> laughing and he'll, I'll be talking about like this. And he'll, here's the word you love using. This is a nothing burger. And it's oh. not. <laughs> Remember, dude, tell her this story. I'll be the end again. Remember when you were so excited because it was something about COVID and racist. So Berg 
fucking photoshops Doug of COVID germ. was on the show. <laughs> who's like my idol. And then I did this character and it was COVID is racist. So we put a Ku Klux Klan hood on a COVID organism and it just bombed. It didn't, it didn't. But this, it, the, the, the gag is a COVID germ wearing a Klan hat. So it comes out and that's the, the reveal. And then Berg does one line, it doesn't work. And he's like, this isn't gonna work. And it's 10 minutes of him sticking with it saying this sucks. And I'm laughing like this the whole time. I was like, and then the show's over. I was like, wow, that was a bad move. I'm like, that is that whole show is hilarious. Like, nah, it was a nothing burger, dude. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to bring the COVID germ back as what this week? Like in a Santa hat or something. Okay. No, no, no. Don't do me any favors. <laughs> Let's do it on uh, Fridays uh, in hot water. Oh, it's I want to so be. I want to be like a vaccine character. That sounds like great. come in and I'll just talk about like. Because it seems like if you are are someone who's on TV, you get an empty one, and then if you're an undesirable, you get the real one. The, a woman passed out. Did you see the nurse? Yes, I saw that shit. She got the co- yeah, she got the COVID. They took that and down already, you know. Passed out. I just watched an hour ago. No way. I then then send me the link when you get a chance because uh, there's a link on, if it's our Twitter feed. Someone's tweeted it to me. I looked at it last night. See if it's still up. I went to look at it today. They took it down. What happened? The nurse got it. She's talking and she faints. She yeah. fainted like 17 minutes later. Yeah. She's like, you know, I feel tweet- dizzy. Oh, you know what- men, catch me. That's what, that's going to be my move. Do you think it was real or fake? Men catch me. Well, yeah, that was my grandma's old move. She would be like, she would sometimes like not eat anything. She'd have like a little bit of chocolate, then she'd pass out. Then the EMTs would come, like all the men would be like, oh, they sent a whole fire truck just for me. Look at all these <laughs> men helping me. I'm like, grandma, your game is on point. That's a good move. That's that's her. That was her move, Aaron. She that would was pass out and then just collect attention. Nice. By the way, I'm doing my fucking Skypes from the Eames chair. For, the lighting's great. You know, you got the light coming in the window. How great is this? How great is this, Aaron? You look like an executive, Gino. Yeah, you look like Matt you Lauer. Passed yeah. I passed out. Oh, no. Aaron. Aaron. Berg. Aaron. Buddy. Aaron. Aaron. Uh-oh. Aaron. Uh, Ori O'Connor, by the way, is a incredibly funny character. I think he I'm just okay. can't seem to find the job since he, since he left lunch. the news. I'm hungry. <laughs> I passed out. Is it me or is Aaron's volume a lot lower? It's a little, it's lower, yeah. Can you turn up your volume, Aaron? How's that? I don't the know. same. All right. Now it's um, like there's a helicopter. Aubrey, we have to have Aubrey Huff on again soon. He's great. Yeah, Aubrey Huff is great. How's oh, that? that's way better. better. What's that? All right. What else? Huff is great. Um, oh, the fuck, you know who's great? The gym dude. The Belmar guy. Yeah. You have the Jersey shirt. Interview yes. Him. Yeah, the yeah, guy yeah. from Sum 41. Ian Smith. Ian Smith is the best. You guys should watch that uh, interview. But then. How much yeah. was that hoodie? Yeah, I got to get that. $45. <laughs> I'm going to get the t shirt. No, it's 40 This is 40 Frank's was 40 You got to help out. I think that their legal bills are at least 100 bucks. But he's never going to pay not, those. They're not said. paying the uh, the fines from the, the $15,000 a day. They're not paying that. And in fact, they're going to like sue the state. I think they're going to sue New Jersey. Well, he's it's insane. He said it on our show, what? Uh, shameless plug, but he said, he's like, really? I'm like, tell them how they, how they came to the amount. It's like, well, if this is what you're making on your GoFundMe. This is what we're going to find you. Absolutely no basis, in fact, other than what will fucking destroy their GoFundMe. Oh, fine. We'll just make the fine equate to the GoFundMe. That, that, I'll tell you, the last guy that did that made his essential workers wear masks. Wow. <laughs> just trying to stay on brand here, people. Oh, boy. All right. Well, we did it, guys. This was fun. This Very was smooth. fun. Chrissy, Thank you. you look great. Your skin looks fantastic. <gasps> Thank you. I've been trying to drink more water and I have um, my skincare regime is like on point. Also, I think I have a filter <laughs> on my, on my filter Zoom. These? My yeah, wife does that now. Filter. She takes pictures with a filter. It's That's cheating. That's dirty pool. It is yeah, dirty. Yeah, without a doubt. It's, it's a dirty world, baby. You got to play dirty. Um... Guys, plug this. This will be out, you know, Christmas time. So 
what what's coming up for you guys i know follow both of these wonderful guys on twitter uh for aaron Aaronberg comedy for gino i think it's diamond eugene one yeah I, I don't think they're banning anyone on twitter anymore because Dustin's are they because over. i think trump said something shitty about it a couple months ago and now i i feel like i haven't really changed much and and knock wood i'm still fucking you know I haven't gotten, I, I'm on a great streak here with this one. Well, supposedly there's like a quiz you can do. You can like take your handle and put it through this thing and it'll tell you if you're a problematic account or not. And I, nice. came, up, I came up as not problematic, which I was shocked by because I've, because of the people I You got to double down on stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe I'll send that to you guys too. Um, yeah. What else do you guys want to plug? I know you have Gum Fridays. Gum Fridays Patreon, patreon.com slash gum Fridays. Uh, we will be in Atlantic City, January 22, 23, Comedians of the Compound. Chrissy will be at the next one we do in Tampa, which I believe will be in March. So that's going to be super fun. Uh, I will be at the Laugh Stop in Cuyahoga Falls. Cuyahoga. Cuyahoga Falls in March. And uh, what else? Oh, The I'll merch at, page. Uh, Burn Uncle fucking, Vinny's. Burn Uncle built Vinny's a in fucking February. glorious March page, and the first wave went out. Will the next wave be up by the time this airs? This, we will have brand new shirts up Ooh. right after the new year. Okay. Oh, and they're great. I've Maybe seen some before of them. the new year. How exciting. And I believe, if I may say, I, I think the, the sheep shirt that everyone seems to like, I think that's about to become a hoodie. Am I correct, Aaron? Yes, I got to get that. Yeah, I, hope they're not, I hope they're not sold out because I really want a sheep. I want a sheep shirt or we'll a sheep, do sheep hoodie. hoodies. I ordered, yeah, I by the way, I ordered new stickers because uh, I went through the first batch. If you didn't get your sticker yet, just DM me and I'll get you. I'll get them to you. They're like, what do they cost? I'm not charging anyone anything for that. I'll, I'll foot the bill for these. Let's get them wow. out there. Oh, by the way, January 8th, I'm going to be headlining the Hilltop Bar and Grill in Tannersville, New York with Amanda Woo. Gale going to be opening for me friend of compound friend of the show so yeah check tickets there they might be close to selling out but get your tickets for that yeah friday January. oh and i did some trivia show with bobby and luby that will also be bonus christmasy content on compound media Ooh. uh where i was team italy along with larry bea aaron that was uh that was gold yeah that sounds fun <laughs> pretty exciting oh yeah it's all coming together it's all coming together. Guys, thank you so much for coming on the Christmas special. Watching Hot Water on Compound Media. Get your If you haven't checked out Compound Media yet, you're missing out big time on a no. lot of funny and a lot of lols. Gino and Aaron, thank you so much for coming on. Love you guys so much. See you soon. Bye. Love you, Chrissy. Thank you. Love you, Chrissy. You're the best. <laughs>